In this webinar, we're going to look at using Purple Mash effectively in the classroom. So a lot of us have probably been using it uh, remotely, online, uh, for quite some time now. But we're going to look at how you the features that you might use when you're actually in the classroom. So the first thing I would recommend is make sure that the pupils are able to get into Purple Mash nice and quickly in the lesson. The best way to do this is to go to the admin area and make sure that you're using the quick login shortcut. So you could uh, ask your technician maybe to do this, but you just want to copy that and put it as a shortcut on the machines that you're going to use. Now, if that's an iPad, uh, you can just bob this into the address bar and click the sharing option and add to home page. And then that will uh, that will create what looks like an app. But effectively, what that means is if I open another window just to show you, if we open another window here. They'll be able to go straight into Purple Mash without logging in. But if you've set them a to do or they need to save work, they can just click login. They can click on their class, which should come up here. They can click on their name and you can see their avatars there as well. So Tyler just clicks on his name and then just clicks on their animal logins. If they've got animal, uh, if they've got picture logins, if they've got text based logins, they can just put the uh, type it in there and click login and you're straight into Purple Mash. Now, if you use that in combination with setting a to do, then you'll really add pace to the lesson because you'll be straight into the activities that you need to go to. So that's the first thing. Make sure that uh, you're using the uh, quick login shortcut rather than going to a website um, and having to put the username and password in and that sort of thing. Now, over the uh, last few months, we've upgraded to do's as well. They were great before. They're even better now. So I'll just click on my to do's here and you can see a range of different to do's that I have set for the children. So this one on Roman food, this is a research project. So that's a collaborative to do. And that's using uh, to write to find out about Roman food. This one here, I haven't actually set them a physical task. What I've actually done here, if I click the edit button to show you, is I've asked them to read chapter one of the class book, which is the line, Witch in the wardrobe. OK, so that's all I'm asking them to do. So they will get a to do saying this is this is what I'd like you to do. Read chapter one of line, Witch in the wardrobe. We're going to be discussing that on Monday. Again, I've got all the usual. I could add speech support. I could add a document to it, etc. Um, but that's the main thing I want to do. And what will happen is when they get that to do, they can just click mark it as read. OK, and you'll be able to see who's read it and who hasn't as well. OK, so that's that's another type of task. This one is um, a spelling test for the week. So I've set them a spelling test, but I've also included the look cover right check document. So again, if I edit this, you'll see I've added the spelling quiz uh, from our spelling resources. And then what I've done is I've added a supporting document, which is a PDF of the look cover right check for those spellings. So you can now add supporting documents to a to do as well. So that's, uh, that's another type of to do I've set. This one is for a collaboration of ideas. So we might be using this uh, at the beginning of the lesson. Uh, again, it's a bit like an ideas wall is to connect, but you can set that as collaborating on. And that means that they can all contribute to it uh, in real time. So that's uh, dis key describing words when we're looking at characters. Um, in this case, the BFG. And then lastly, down here, I've added um, a video that I want them uh, to watch uh, to get ideas uh, ready for describing a volcano. So I just click edit. You'll see what I've done here is I've actually pasted in the description here the embed code from the YouTube video that I've used. So I, you paste in if you want to put in a video, you pop the video embed code in here and then when they view it it will look like this they'll be able to play the video uh, within the to do and then they can carry on with the uh, with the rest of the task so there's some uh, interesting changes uh, there that you could take advantage of which makes it a lot more flexible in the classroom rather than having to send them to a website to have a look at 
um, a video that you want them to watch in lesson, you can just embed it straight on in. OK, so that's uh, the to do's. I'm not going to go through the whole sort of setting of to do's um, in this. I'm just making you aware of the different functionality that you've got um, within the classroom. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting uh, as well is the data dashboard up here. Now, I like that because that's one stop shop for accessing the to do's that I've got open. So if I wanted to see the work that they created in one of these areas, I can just click on the relevant to do and click show the work and all the work that's been handed in will be um, in one place for me. So that's very convenient. The other thing that's very convenient in here is any scores uh, that they've uh, created uh, will be in here. So these are the activities within Purple Mash that generate a score. So if I click multiplication tables check, you can see three of the children have done some of the multiplication tables and you can see what sort of accuracy they've got as well. And if I click on the child's name and the little plus button there, you can see also where they're getting them wrong. So that can be quite useful for seeing if there's particular times tables that they're having issues with. So uh, you, you've got that for a, a multitude of different activities. Uh, you've also got your judgments here as well. So if you've been attaching um, objectives to a to do, uh, you'll be able to assess those. And then from here, you'll be able to see where they're up to. So if uh, Abdul here, I have assessed him as expected emerging exceeding and you can see quite clearly and the rest of the class you'll be able to see where they've got up to and of course this will update as you change your judgments um, on uh, the children's work and you can export that as an excel spreadsheet so just for tracking especially if i'm using for instance in this case um, the computing scheme of work it's uh, it's very convenient if i've attached learning objectives and assess them and then last but not least i've got the rewards section here as well and if i've been given rewards uh, for the work that they've been doing, you'll be able to clearly see how many rewards you've given them and in what subject areas. So I can see Addison here has got three rewards for English. He's got one for computing. Abdul's got three for computing. Um, and you can, you, again, you can export these as Excel spreadsheets and you can also change them so that they're uh, by achievement uh, as well. OK, so that's what this button's for. And again, that can be really useful in the classroom situation two okay um other things that you might find useful uh, remember you've got all these resources in here um there's over a thousand activities in here and they can be differentiated as well so if i if i clicked on one of these let's say i click on history and uh, maybe it's ancient egypt and uh, let's say it is Cleopatra that we're looking at. I can launch the activity and you can see I've got some extra information that I could use on Cleopatra for research. I've got a template which has already got preloaded images. So again, in a lesson, I'm not spending ages with them on the internet looking for images and downloading them and pasting them in. I've got some ready-made clip art I can just drag and drop across here. But the beauty of these are, these are starting points. I could use this straight out the box, but what I can also do is differentiate it if I need to and change it. So I can just click the teacher hat at the top and you can see now I've got pencils in here. If I want to add audio support, I can just click on the sound button and I can record audio straight in there. So I can just record some audio and introduction. And you can see there's now a little play button up there. If I want to add a checklist for my learning objectives, I can click on the, the little cog up here and I can choose to have a checklist. And I can choose one that's already mid-built or I can browse and collect one that I've already made. OK, so uh, I, I could choose I could choose one that's created like that. But again, because I'm in edit mode, I can change any of these. If I don't want one of them, I can just bin them and I can add new ones as well. And I can save these as separate files so I can use them again on other pieces of work. If you're not quite sure about how to do any of this, there's a little built in video in the top here, but also check out the uh, training platform as well 
uh, for a course on setting tasks. OK, so that's uh, one thing I could do is I could edit one of the pre-made activities. But I can also, of course, um, create my own. So if I go back to, let's say, tools and I go to publishing here, I might want to create my own newspaper so I can just add a newspaper here. If I want to add extra pages to it, I could just add extra pages like this. If I want to add support to it, because this is a blank template, there's my teacher hat. So I can just click on there and click on the cog. Does it have a word bin? Well, it doesn't, but I can choose one I've already made. And I've made one on, um, let's see, what have I got? Reporting, report writing. So I'm going to have a report writing checklist when, what, why, where. OK, I might want to um, want to make sure that they're looking at everything that we've covered about support writing. So, again, I can choose right report writing top tips. And I can add that as well. So then when they click on the little tick button, they've got my top tips for report writing to refer to. Uh, when they're doing their writing. So again, I can just save this and set this as a to do. And of course, I can give different levels of support to different children, because if you haven't already done so, groups is a really good way of helping you to quickly set a task and differentiate. So groups, you just go admin and you click create and manage users here. And then you just go to groups and you click the add button to add a new group. So if this is yellow group, and this might be maths, I can just add the staff who need to see yellow group, and I can add the pupils. And if it's in Mercury class, I can just type in there, select the children I need. OK, now one of the beauties about groups is they don't have to be in the same class. So if you've got an, like an SEN group, um, you can just add pupils and then you could add some from Jupiter as well. And I can add a few more in there and you can see when I click save, um, I've got yellow group. There it is. And you can see some are from Mercury, some are from Jupiter. OK, and then if I wanted to add that uh, sorry if I wanted to give that group a task so if I go to tools and let's say I want to give them a multiplication test so I can set that as a to do I can go through the wizard here uh, I can say I want this to be a custom mode this group I know they can do not to fives and tens so I want them to do that I want them to have 25 questions next group yellow set and only that group is going to get that set of multiplication so i might want to another group of mine might um just know two fives tens so i can set them a multiplication test just on those um tables okay so groups really useful you can um they can be pan class they don't have to be just within one class if you don't uh, want them to be now, the other thing that will really help you is planning as well back at school. So if you remember uh, during the lockdowns, uh, when you clicked on the teachers area, we had a whole load of ready made resources in the school closure area. And indeed, they're still archived for you. Uh, so you've got the uh, the spring term uh, lockdown and you've got the uh, the sort of first lockdown of 17 weeks from the uh, from 2019-20 uh, um, as well. But besides those, you've also got a whole set of resources here that will help you. So if you're in England, you can just click Purple Mash in England. And for Key Stage 1 and 2, for instance, I could just click Science. I could open this up and I can just go through to my topic. So let's say I am in Year 2, Living Things and Their Habitats. I can see the learning objectives over here a list of the resources, the hyperlink straight to, to, these, to these resources and suggestions of other resources in Purple Mash that might help me meet those learning objectives. OK, so again, if I wanted to, I could copy and paste these into my planning. 
if I if I needed to, but at least I can go straight through them to them and take a look. And that will save me a whole lot of time uh, because I'm not having to um, search through lots of different resources uh, in Purple Mash. I can go straight to the relevant ones. Uh, within here, you've also got all the mapping uh, for the early years, and this will be updated when the new early years framework is finally published. And uh, you've also got mapping to things like NCC, E, uh, and switched on computing if you're using that. But if you're using our scheme of work, there's a schema work up here, which has got all the modules in. And uh, within each of these modules, you've got the medium term planning and the lesson plans, progression of skill statements. You've got unplugged activities. So you've got everything uh, you need um, for the computing curriculum. If you want to use that all neatly uh, packaged in one area there. And of course, you've also got access to the grammar resources by year group or by theme. And you've got the spelling resources as well. So you've got spelling schema work here, a look, cover, right, check, a dictation and a spelling quiz uh, for each week as well. So again, if you're not aware of that, that's all there ready for you to use. Uh, if you're using Serial Mash, you've got all the planning in the Serial Mash area here as well. So you've got all the books. You can see the current book and what's coming up um, in that current book as well. And you'll be able to access all the resources, including extra teaching uh, guidance for each chapter uh, of the books as well. Um, you can access all the principles. You can access all the online safety resources in one place. And a feature I particularly like is this calendar, because, again, I can just scroll straight on down and take a look at what special days, weeks, months there are coming up and I have links to where the resources are that will support those uh, things like National Pet Month, May Day, Ramadan, etc. OK, so don't forget the planning area. That's going to be really useful uh, for you and save you quite a lot of time. If you're using if you're early years and you're using Minimash, what I would suggest you do here is click on the Minimash button and go to the settings and make sure that the class that you're using it with has actually got trays switched on. So the default is no. So you just need to change it to yes and click save. And if you do that, what you can do as the teacher is you can log in at the beginning of the lesson or the day to the machines that you're going to be using, whether those are iPads or Chromebooks or, or laptops or desktops. And then you can open up Minimash ready for them. And what it will mean Trace. is that a pupil can just create an activity. So they can they can color they can color this in. And then when they come to save it will go straight through to their trays. And notice you can also put their photos on their trays. So if they're younger children, they can't recognize their name yet, they can see it's them, they can click on their photo and it will just name and date it and they just click save and the next child can come to the work. So again, that might make it much easier. Numbers and counting. That might make it much easier in the classroom uh, for you. And don't forget, you've also got your topic pins here. So there's lots of uh, topic pins in here that you could use uh, with loads of ready-made resources, which will fit really nicely, I'm sure, with a lot of the uh, projects that you're likely to be uh, covering with the pupils in uh, early years. So if I want under the C, I can just click the plus button. If I want it to be the first thing they see, click the star. Okay. And then when they click on there, they've got all the resources in there as well. Now, there's plenty of other things I could talk to you about. Um, including the fact that in teacher tools, you can create your own activities as well. So these are the templates for building your own. So you could create a new tray for a new topic, make some activities, put them in and pin them to the front. But again, if you need to know more, there's a help area here. And there's also a course on the uh, training platform as well. All about that. So again, I'm not going into detail in Minimash. I'm just pointing out the fact that there is a nice, easy way that you can use it. Um, in the classroom uh, to just help you um, with the sort of quick and efficient access and saving uh, of the work. Sharing of work, uh, you might want to use uh, the sharing feature, especially for things like a plenary. 
Um, so if you have been doing some work in Purple Mash with the children, you might want them to hand in their work and then share the work to a display board uh, where you'll be able to see all their uh, work in here. So if, if I clicked on this display board that I've made computing, I would be able to see all the classes work and we'd be able to go straight in and take a look at some of their work. So it's just loading up at the moment. And so if we wanted to see this child's piece of work on uh, the G genie of the lamp, I can click on it and there's the lamp. So if I click it three times, it turns into a genie. Fantastic. So you can access uh, that very quickly and easily. Really nice for a plenary. Don't forget, if you've created a display board as a plenary, when you delete the display board afterwards, it doesn't delete the work. These are all links to the work. And you can put these on your school website if you want to. Um, you can uh, generate QR codes and send them home uh, to parents. Uh, there's a whole host of things that you can do um, with a, a display board. So you can make as many display boards as you like. There's a whole load of different ones that we've uh, created. And then you can also blog uh, uh, about your work. So blogging would work really well um, for topic work. So you could have a blog on the Vikings or you could if you're looking at volcanoes, you could have a volcano blog. And of course, with volcano blogs and any type of blog, you can add video via embed code as well. And uh, the children can all contribute by adding what they found out about uh, that topic. So topic blogs would work really nicely as a sort of interactive, almost like a learning journey into what they're um, studying at the moment. So you've got blogs as well. And then last but not least on this sort of thing, what about uh, email? If you click on the tools area here, you've also got to email, which is great for um, sharing work with uh, children. You can create email activities called to respond. There's a whole load already made for you. Uh, you just need to make sure that you check your settings and make sure it's set up as you want it to be. Do you want pseudo emails? Do you want allowing emailing within the class. Do you want them to be able to email staff members, um, not your own private email addresses, just within Purple Mash? So you've got lots of functionality here. You can either open it up or really close it down as to how they use email. But it would be a great way of saying notification. Uh, so if you sent uh, the football team an, an email, then they'd all get that that could be set up as a group and you could email that group if it was just to remind them that you're going on a, uh, a school trip tomorrow and they need their wellies um, you could just send them an email and they would get an alert to tell them that uh, they need to bring their Wellingtons tomorrow and a packed lunch maybe so do um, do use uh, do use email as, as a way of sort of communicating um, with them as well OK, so I've just done a quick look through some of the features that you might uh, want to use uh, within the class itself. Um, what uh, you can also do here is click on the teachers area and scroll on down to the professional development. And here there's some really helpful things for you. If you need a chat with one of us to go through things in a little bit more detail, you can book a mass chat. Uh, if uh, you just want some inspirational ideas of things that you can do, try the teacher blog. We do lots of webinars like this one. You can book on as many as you like. If you miss them, don't worry. We'll send you a link. If you signed up for them, we know you're interested. So we'll send you a link to the recording of them. And uh, you've also got the training platform here as well. And within the training platform, you have got 24 seven access to lots of different courses that we've created which you can simply go through if it was setting and assessing work you can just click on the course and you can see there's different tabs for the different parts of the course so if it was differentiation you were interested in you've got a little video that talks you through how to do it and you've got a little quiz to check that you understood it okay so again you can access that at any point uh, you like and that is great for your sort of individual help and support at the moment of course unfortunately we're not uh, running uh, events hosted at schools. Uh, hopefully we will get back to that in the not too distant future. So uh, when we are back to a bit more normality, do uh, check out and see if there's an event 
um, like a live event, if you like, uh, near you. But in the meantime, do go uh, for as many webinars as you like, book some mass chats, have a look on the teacher blog for ideas. OK, so I'm hoping that was um, a useful little uh, roundup of some of the things uh, that you're able to use um, to make life easier and more effective in the classroom. But I would say if you remember nothing else about this, quick login shortcuts, get the children straight in and then set them a to do so they can click on it and go straight through to their task. So just to show you what that would look like, if I click on admin and I impersonate a pupil, let's find one in Mercury class. All they'd need to do was quickly log in and go straight through to their to do's and there's their work ready to go. And they can just click start and you can see if they've read to, uh, this note. They can click I've read this um, as well. You can, they can quickly access their rewards and if they've got any messages it'll be on their alerts there okay hope you enjoyed that webinar enjoy your purple mashing um, in the uh, summer term and um, thanks for joining us today